Yeah, so today uh, um, we're going to present the case of uh, the state and the future of the uh, uh, cloud native model serving. Um, so uh, my name is Dan. Uh, I lead the uh, ML inference team at Bloomberg. And Nick um, is uh, um, with IBM. Um, uh, Nick, you want to uh, introduce yourself? Um, hi, yeah, I um, I work for IBM in the Watson core group. Um, we uh, maintain sort of common ML infrastructure components for different products. And uh, yeah, I'm contributing to KSO. Cool. Um, yeah, so um, KSO was uh, our main primary grid to solve the challenging model deployment issue on like, Kubernetes. So uh, deploying models on Kubernetes uh, uh, it's not a very difficult problem, uh, so um, you also have to learn like uh, model theorizations and how to build model servers and uh, uh, understand like HTTP gRPC protocol, how to containerize the model server, uh, and uh, you uh, need to know all the Kubernetes concepts like deployment service, like uh, how do you like uh, um, auto scale your like uh, deployments with uh, uh, HPA, VPA, or like. Uh, um, H, uh, KPA um, and um, uh, in order to keep the uh, the service uh, um, um, healthy, you want to know like set up like a readiness, reliability probes, and then all these like uh, um, in order to secure a service, you need to understand like a service mesh. Uh, and uh, um, over the time, like uh, um, nowadays, like uh, models are getting uh, bigger and bigger, and over the time, the serving the models on CPUs are no longer uh, can satisfy your latency requirement. So. Uh, you will need to serve your models on on, on GPUs to uh, reduce latency. So um, so as you can see, like uh, uh, deploying the models on like Kubernetes is, it has a um, you need to learn a lot. And uh, besides the uh, data science like a uh, skill set, um, so um, all so case of like uh, we initially created a case of mainly to address and this uh, uh, these challenges. Like uh, we want to like a. Uh, um, make the deployment really easy, and uh, um, uh, we just want to. Uh, if user can give us a model, then we can easily turn it into an HTTP endpoint. Uh, user can call easily um, to encaps encapsulate all these like infrastructure um, um, details. Um, so yeah, so KServe is a highly scalable and a standards-based serverless model inference platform um, on Kubernetes. Um, that uh, encapsulates all the complexity um, deploying models to production. And now the project um, was now, is now hosted in, as an incubation project uh, in AFAI Data Foundation. Um, and so uh, we moved to the AFAI early this year. Um, um, yeah, so um, the case of, um, can be uh, uh, deployed as a standalone, uh, or um, you can also deploy case of as an add on component with Qflow. On um, any cloud uh, or on prime. Um, so, yeah, some stats about the uh, KSERF. Um, right now, well, we have around, like, uh, based on the latest uh, survey, uh, there are 60% of uh, Qflow users on either KSERF and KF Serving. KF Serving was the uh, um, previous name. Um, and um, um, we have uh, around, like, 100K uh, case of Docker image downloads. Um, and uh, right now the project has uh, uh, around like 20 uh, core committers and we have total uh, 172 contributors uh, who have been like a uh, contributor to like a uh, KSERF. Uh, and uh, uh, we have a, a, a long list of like, adopters uh, from various companies like uh, uh, Bloomberg, IBM, NVIDIA um, and uh, um, um, along with other companies. Um, so some uh, backstory for like KSERF. So uh, we actually started the KSERF, uh, uh, the previous name is KF Serving, actually was uh, under the Qflow during the first uh, Qflow summit. So we, we started the project uh, around the, uh, after the, the, we presented the idea, initial idea, and then we kicked off the project uh, um, after the first uh, Qflow summit that was back in 2019, April, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, we uh, uh, first presented the case serve uh, uh, previously kept serving uh, at KubeCon um, 2019 uh, San Diego. Um, um, and uh, in 2022, uh, we have NVIDIA contributed to uh, the major um, V2 uh, um, 
standardized inference protocol to the KSO project, which is now getting a lot of, uh, a lot of attraction um, in the industry. Uh, we, have, we have many uh, model industry leading uh, model servers implemented this V2 protocol. Uh, and in later 2021, uh, IBM open sourced the uh, uh, model mesh project, which they have been internally running on production for a few years. It's now uh, open source to uh, the KSO project. Um, um, and uh, early this year, we um, moved uh, as the project grew much bigger. Um, we decided to move the, uh, the KSO project to um, the Linux Foundation. Um, as an incubation project, um, and the project was uh, yeah was named, renamed from KServing to KServe, and KServe is now a, a independent GitHub org, um, which hosts a, a couple of uh, um, sub projects like a Model Mesh, case original KServe, and uh, um, Models Web UI, which is used in, in Qflow. Um, yeah, um, and next let's take a look at the current KServe uh, landscape. So. Um, we um, at the core, like we have, we the core inference uh, components. We support um, deploying uh, uh, the inference service uh, with a transformer predictor, and now we uh, we can um, um, the default case, uh, the case serve uh, uh, comes with a, a set of uh, outbox uh, serving runtimes uh, such as uh, uh, Triton inference server, uh, TF serving, uh, Torch serve. And um, uh, we also we also uh, support a custom uh, runtime SDK. You can easily uh, use it to build your own model server. Um, and of course, the most important one is the V2 inference protocol, uh, which standardizes the uh, uh, the inference across multiple uh, uh, serving runtimes. Um, so can you can pretty much like a, a seamlessly switch from one serving runtime to other because they speak the same uh, protocol. Uh, another um, major feature that K, uh, KSO provides is serverless auto scaling. Uh, so uh, we support uh, request um, based auto scaling, which works on both CPU and GPU device. Um, and so we also support scale um, down and from zero. Um, um, so we also support uh, uh, all the major uh, cloud storage um, with uh, uh, PVC. Um, um, besides the core inference, we also um, support a wide range of like uh, advanced inference capabilities, such as the uh, uh, model mesh. Uh, you can deploy uh, multiple models at scale, uh, which Nick will talk about later. And uh, we recently introduced the inference graph um, for uh, support like a more advanced uh, um, in, uh, model routing to build like a multi-stage like uh, inference pipelines. Uh, and we also um, there are features like uh, payload logging, request batching, and a canary route. Um, um, so KSERF also comes with uh, um, features like model explainability and monitoring, which is like uh, also important to one, uh, on production where once the model is deployed, uh, you want to keep monitoring the model, uh, see if your uh, model is getting uh, uh, the data getting drifted or the model response getting drifted. Uh, and so you, some users also want to like uh, uh, explain the uh, um, um, the model results whether to make sure that they are, are producing a reliable per, uh, inference results. Um, so uh, we have uh, uh, introduced a lot of features this year in 2022. Uh, we um, in zero case of zero dot eight, we start introducing the serving runtime for uh, better uh, flexibility and uh, extensibility to um, um, adding um, customers uh, customized uh, serving runtimes. Um, so uh, and also in zero dot dot nine, we introduced the inference inference graph um, as model mesh project um, um, joined the case of. Um, GitHub Arc, we uh, have been, uh, this year, we have spent uh, uh, um, quite significant effort to unify the uh, inference service API for both KSERV and model, uh, model Mesh. So you can uh, use the same uh, inference API to deploy uh, models both to KSERV and Mono Mesh. Um, and, and there's also um, 
unif unifications for like uh, how uh, storage works for uh, k serve and model mesh, uh, along with a uh, model status. Um, and uh, um, and other uh, work we have done this year is like support ML, uh, ML flow uh, model format. Um, so uh, the models saved with ML flow, you can um, also um, easily serve on case of um, to deploy the, the uh, on the inference uh, uh, inference service. Um, and yeah, we did a bunch of improvements on raw Kubernetes deployments. Um, which is a, a, a new uh, deploy model we supported uh, uh, since uh, uh, 0 0.7. Um, and, uh, um, um, and we also unified the, uh, um, the auto scaling fields on both uh, serverless and raw deployment mode. Um, yeah, for more details, you can always check our release block, uh, 0 .0, mainly 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 release. Um, so, uh, so just want to go through uh, a few like important features we uh, introduced uh, this year. So, um, so we and uh, the main uh, feature we, I just mentioned is like the uh, we introduced the serving runtime as a new uh, customer resource where you can define the uh, um, the part uh, the part template for uh, for your um, serving runtime to um, and to support the various different uh, model format. So on the uh, serving runtime, you can uh, define the uh, um, the model format you support for your serving runtimes, and you uh, um, most importantly uh, it defines the key fields like uh, uh, the serving runtime images, uh, as well as the resource uh, uh, resource like uh, um, definitions. Um, with the uh, um, so you can use this uh, serving runtime as a template to simplify your uh, uh, your inference service YAML. So on the inference surface YAML, all you need to define is the um, is the model format name, uh, which can be like SKLN, PyTorch, TensorFlow, um, any um, popular uh, ML framework. Framework. Um, um, you can also optionally define the uh, uh, the versions of the framework, um, um, and uh, so by default, um, the case serve will. Um, based on the the model format to pick up the uh, the serving runtime can support the uh, the corresponding uh, model format um, or the the version. So um, and uh, you can also um, always um, override the runtime version to pick up the uh, serving runtime you want um, to serve the given uh, model format. Um, so this really gives the flexibility. Um, and uh, simplicity on the YAML, which you expose to your end user. Um, so um, you don't need to, user don't need to write the lengthy like continuous spec, which is uh, uh, very Kubernetes, Kubernetes oriented. And then all you need to tell uh, is the, what is your model format? Uh, what is the version of the, uh, the framework you use to train your model uh, and, uh, and point to the, the model you um, on the cloud storage um, and and then KSERV can um, deploy the model um, uh, out of the box. Um, um, so um, this is a, a, um, the, a matrix about the support matrix about all the serving runtime we can um, out of the box from KSERV. So uh, the major serving runtime we support is ML Server, uh, Triton, TorchServe. They all implement the B2 uh, influencer protocol. And so can you, you can uh, switch between these serving runtimes pretty uh, seamlessly. Um, so we uh, with this uh, default serving run, we can cover pretty wide uh, uh, ML frameworks um, um, and with both uh, with the uh, the B two protocol. Uh, another major feature we uh, introduced uh, uh, this year is the inference graph. Um, so. Um, as there are use cases where like uh, um, people want to um, build a multi-stage inference pipelines, where um, typical examples is like a uh, image processing pipeline, where you uh, first want to um, um, detect, uh, um, um, for example, the the cat dog uh, example, where you want to like uh, first classify the image whether it's a cat or dog, and then like you. 
um, you further, uh, once you detect if it's a dog, then you may want to like uh, uh, send to another model to further classify the uh, dog breed, uh, um, which uh, you need to um, um, sequence the two models and uh, to uh, produce the, uh, the final uh, inference uh, result. Um, so the case of like a, is in a unique position to like a, uh, to build this like distributed inference graph with its uh, uh, the native like integration with inference service as well as uh, uh, you can uh, leverage the uh, the serverless auto scaling to uh, scale each model independently uh, and we have a, a uh, the inference router which is uh, can route your request uh, um, uh, among these models like auto uh, out of box for you. Um, as you can see, you can even uh, specify um, complex conditions where, um, based on uh, a, um, a, um, based on the previous model, you can uh, you can uh, write quite an expression to uh, route to a different model based on different conditions, um, or you can. Um, so the inference graph is highly uh, composable. So it's uh, it's made of like a, with a list of routing nodes where each node can consist a set of the routing steps, um, which can be either uh, a route to an inference service or another node. Um, and uh, um, it can support, uh, currently it can support uh, different types of uh, routing nodes, such as uh, sequence switch um, ensemble, uh, where you want to like uh, combine the model result from uh, multiple models, uh, or you want to like split the traffic among um, different models. Um, so it's a, it's really powerful, like um, where you can um, define a YAML and then you don't need to uh, write any of your like routing logic to um, um, deploy the uh, the inference graph like with a complex pipeline. Yeah, next I'll hand over to Nick to uh, um, give a brief introduction of, for MonoMesh. Thanks, Dan. Um, so yeah, Model Mesh is, a, a, I guess, a technology that we had been um, running in production in IBM for a few years. And uh, I think it was about a year ago, we contributed it to KServe since we were already working you know, as part of the KServe project. Um, and it's really um, kind of satisfies a particular uh, kind of use case, which we're seeing more often now, where the, the, there's a you know much larger number of models, maybe personalized per per user of a service, um, and they're changing quite often. Maybe getting retrained a lot. Um, maybe they're like fine-tuned models on the uh, on a larger model. Um, and this uh, model mesh, instead of the sort of k-native model where um, there's a container spun up or a, a deployment of containers per per model, this is a sort of more static set of pods uh, where each pod loads multiple models at the same time. And so it's sort of like a high density um, idea. So model mesh is like a layer that manages um, uh, the, you know, the set of models like a LRU cache, and it sort of decides where and when to load them and routes the requests to them. Um, and it does it kind of abstractly. So it works with uh, lots of different model servers as long as they um, provide the kind of load unload type semantics, uh, which most of them do now. Um, do you want to jump to the next slide? Maybe. Oh, I think there was one in, in between. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's useful when uh, you have like a much larger number of models than you may want to serve at a given time. So it has sort of serverless type uh, function. Instead of spinning up pods there, it, it will load dynamically the models when needed within the within the pods, but it will try and fill, keep the space filled with the most recently used ones. So, you know, it, when we run in production, maybe only 10% of the models in use are actually loaded at a time, but it, it manages all of that automatically. So. Um, you know, you can really optimize the footprint. Uh, it'll, and then it will auto scale um, also, you know, without needing any configuration across those pools. So it'll load the same copy of the model in multiple pods and balance between them automatically if, if it's more heavily used and the less heavily used ones might get evicted or not, not loaded altogether. Um, has a bunch of other stuff like Prometheus metrics. Um, we've got integration out of the box, like I said, with a bunch of the same model servers that KServe's already supported, like Triton, uh, ML Server, um, TorchServe we added recently. Um, 
and Intel, uh, it wasn't on the matrix before, but Intel's open VNA model server also for the integration. Um, and you can create your own via the same sort of serving runtime uh, abstraction, the CRD that Dan mentioned before. You can create, you know, multi-model type serving runtimes and, and then the regular single model types. So we've been working to kind of align some of the features um, and uh, and functionality and the interfaces. So the, the same CRDs are used, whether you're doing a sort of K-native or raw uh, deployment or a model mesh deployment, you can sort of deploy the model in the same way. Um, yeah, uh, this is sort of illustration of how we're, how the two uh, sides are kind of coming together. Right now we have, they are sort of separate controllers and you can, um, you can install independently uh, one or the other, but they, um, you know, they also work together and sort of will uh, only process the CRDs that, um, you know, are intended for that particular usage. Um, and uh, yeah, we're sort of aligning the storage, the way the storage configuration works and the, the capabilities there. Um, we recently added cluster serving, uh, or sorry, cluster scope support to the model mesh controller. So it works like the same way as the, the case of controller, which it didn't have before. And um, you can use the case of uh, transformers now along with the model mesh predictor. So, you know, k will deploy a transformer that you might have in the same way as it does uh, and then the predictor within that same inference service can be running in within a model mesh cluster. Um, so that's another integration that we did uh, not too long ago. Okay, um, so I'll hand back to Dan, I guess, to cover. Yeah. Right sure. um, Thanks. So yeah, so um, next year as so, um, I think case of girls more uh, mature. So we, um, next year uh, we want to um, graduate the project to the 1.0 version. Um, so we kind of like have been discussing with the, the case of community about the roadmap. So um, we um, might still need to finalize the, the eventual roadmap, but like uh, these are the items um, come up like uh, uh, during the uh, previous like uh, uh, community meetings. So we um, the most importantly, we want to uh, promote the inference service CR, which is kind of the V1 beta 1 to V1. And uh, uh, and then graduate the uh, uh, inference service gra uh, graph and a serving runtime to v1 beta one, um, and uh, uh, we look into like a uh, fully support the REST and gRPC v2 protocol across all the frameworks. Uh, we are almost there. There is still a, a little bit more work, um, but uh, we are very close. Um, and uh, also the cloud storage unification for um, um, all the major uh, cloud uh, providers. Uh, uh, between both like a uh, KSERP and uh, model mesh. Uh, we have did most of the work, but yeah, um, uh, hopefully we can like finish like uh, um, early next year. Um, and uh, um, and model mesh, we um, want to um, promote from like the current alpha state to the beta state. Um, um, yeah, I think we already done most of the work. Um, yeah, we should be able to do uh, promote to the beta um, pretty soon. Um, and other other side, like uh, um, we want to improve the case of uh, observability. And um, um, I think most of there we just like currently is like more of lack of documentation, uh, how to set it up. Um, so we look into like improve the documentation like on um, in terms of like observability, and as well as the uh, authentication authorization like. Uh, um, uh, set up uh, in the um, um, for the from the security perspective, like uh, um, yeah, this is also like around like documentation. It's like uh, people find like difficult to do, but uh, yeah, I, I think we just need to like uh, improve our documentation to um, um, with maybe like some um, we can publish some blog to um, for the um, the setup um, and, and some other features we are looking to support is batch inference. Uh, which is currently, I think, uh, um, mostly the, the one major feature which is missing from the case of, um, but yeah, we look into like a, um, make a proposal, like a, uh, how we can support a batch inference uh, next year. 